Hello everybody, Reggie Time here and in just a minute we're going to be looking at some hands I played over the weekend on the 20 L streets on the iPoker network. Um, before we start, I just want to precursor this by saying I've been playing without a hood all weekend, um, just very, very briefly I promise. Um, I started my Friday evening session on iPoker, I had a small losing session, um, then I moved over to Sky, played there, did really well. Um, had a, had a good winning session on a sky. Then the table started dying. And um, so I switched back across to, to eye poker. And during playing on sky, I was like really enjoying not having a hood and just playing in within like the flow of the game and just playing hands, not necessarily in a vacuum, but just on their merits and not like... Like when you play here, for example, you're like, all oh, right, okay, well, this dude... You know, it'll, it'll three bet you or whatever, and you'll be dicking around, going into this. All right, well, what's this three bet from certain positions, and you know all this shit. And like, I've talked in the past about struggling to play four tables, but when I play on Sky, I can play four tables, five tables, maybe even six tables, really quite comfortably. And that's that time bank. And I think it's because of the hood. I think because we have, I have the hood running. I, and then like, I'm focusing too much on shitty fine details. Uh, based over usually small samples that maybe aren't relevant to the spot we're in, and like you know, just kind of like focusing on things that 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 are pertinent, but not s fucking not hyper pertinent. Not hyper pertinent. So, for example, you you'll like you'll open the cut off and the small blind will three bet, and he's a you know he's an obvious regular. Um, so. Do I really need to look at like exactly what his small blend small blend three bet percentage is? If he's got an overall three bet percentage of ten, then he's going to be wider from the small blind. If he's got an overall three bet of five, he's going to be not as wide. But I'm in there looking for all these fucking shitty little details, and I'm not sure how helpful it is to be honest. So, anyways, long story short, I played with that hood all weekend. I managed to play an extra two tables when doing so, significantly increasing my volume. And I also, because I enjoyed it so much, managed to play like close to like 11 hours from like 1 a.m. Saturday morning through till um, 10 p.m. Sunday night. So whatever that is, 30 odd hours. I managed to play 11 without getting bored, without getting tilted, without getting annoyed. Um, so yeah, we're going to be continuing playing without a hood. So we're going to look, these are all hands that I've just got in and marked after sessions. All these are just pots that have been at least, like, I've put at least 50 big blinds in. There might be a couple where I put 40 of big blinds in. But they're all, like, relatively big pots. They were all played with that hood. We're going to look at them and then see if I would have done anything differently had we had the hood running. Who knows what's going to be in here? There could be some fucking genius plays. There could be some absolutely awful punts. I haven't reviewed any of these. I've just, after the sessions, I've just marked winning and losing hands of, like, around 50 bigs or more. And, um... Now we're going to look at them now. There's a lot to look through. It's probably going to take two videos. I'm going to do this for about 40 minutes and then you know, we'll do the rest in, in like a second video rather than just doing one long video. Um, so yeah, let's let's get stuck in. Some of them might be really, really dull, by the way. They might not take a lot. They might not stand a lot of reviewing. Uh, they might just be like, this could just be like, oh, pocket queens, be pocket jacks, all in pre for whatever, fucking, who knows. Uh, so anyway, here we go. We've got the queens. We get a limp from a very loose passive player. We I saw the button. He min three bets. We had no, okay, this one's going to be dull. Uh, and we lost to kings. Okay, I did say some of these aren't going to be interesting. We'll skip through the all in pre flop ones very quickly because there's nothing more dull than that. So here we have a limp from a very loose passive player from middle position. Over limp from the button from someone who's remarkably loose too. Um, very tight shit reg completes a small blind we make it 7.5x I never really know what size to be making these things, I usually let like the villain stack size to send out the deeper stack we are the bigger I'm making, but we've got two villains in this one this is fine, whatever Um, you can make a case to go in 6 I guess you can make a case for going 12 who knows what the correct number is anyways uh, the two very loose players call, and we managed to get the net out, which is fine. We flop out of the pair. We bet big. Hmm. I thought I would have bet that turn. Why am I? Why am I not 
because this guy's not even aggressive. Pro. Now, I wouldn't have known these stats. Had I had my stats up, these are like post for progression numbers. 5% flop bet, and be fair enough, we're looking at a small sample. 5% flop bet frequency, it's only 17% turn. I don't like my check here. Don't know what I'm trying to achieve. You know, we've got like, maybe I'm just trying to get a check raise all in now, but no, I think here we should just bet and then shove river. Don't like what we're doing here. Check, check. Bet river, call. And yeah, uh, we probably left some money behind there. Maybe if we bet the turn for the river size, he folds. But he's 88 V pip, he's got a pair, he's not folding. Uh, not sure why I didn't bet the turn there, but I didn't. These things are going to happen when you're playing six tables, I guess. Uh, not making excuses for myself, by the way. It's a bad play. Um, it doesn't feel like that's the normal thing I would do there. But maybe at the time I had a read that he was aggressive. Maybe I had a read that he floated in bet. I don't know. Um, either that, maybe I just lost concentration. Who fucking knows? But I don't like it. Um, here we have, a, and I'm not very familiar with this player, a very shit, very passive reg. He makes it 3x under the gun. That's already quite disconcerting. But we got two um, fish coming in the pot, so we're going to come in the pot. Oh, fuck me. We squeeze. I presume I was just going to call there. I guess my logic here is this guy's just going to, like, fold everything that isn't super nutted. And then we're going to, like, these two guys, we're going to be doing pretty pretty reasonable equity shape against these two and there's a good chance we just take it down pre uh, I wasn't expecting to see that but I think I quite like it because if we get through this guy then um, we've created a good situation um, who knows what this guy's going to do maybe he just rips and then we have to fold but if, the, if this guy does rip here then ace 10 is no good anyway he folds, he folds and then the 95 VP of course I wouldn't have been aware he was a 95 VP of course and then we flop top two, whatever. Crack on. Uh, he had 10-6. Um, yeah. Call, call 16 bigs. Raise second pair on the flop. Weekends are good. We have 7-6 suited here. Um, we have... I'm familiar with this player too. I, don't, I can tell by the stats of this player there. Um, he's a... He's just a bad player. He's twenty six eighteen. So like, and stats wise, it's like you know, he plays relatively. He's just fucking really bad. Like always oh, short stacking, buys him for thirty. Sometimes runs it up. Just bad. Just like it's 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 like if tournament when tournament players play cash basically, and that's not nothing against tournament players. But when tournament players who are like so ingrained in tournaments try to bring their tournament style play to a cash table, that's what this fucking useless twat's doing. Um, we three bet. Normally they're a lot shallower than this, uh, which I think is why their four to three bets a bit lower because they're just like maybe doing a bit of race and four bet jamming. Um, I'm happy to three bet to try and like just get a pot in position against a player who thinks pretty bad. So I'm, I'm happy doing this. Uh, we pick up the cold call from the reg from the previous and the super shitty nitty reg, uh, and then this guy just folds, which is whatever. Um, Flopper seven. Don't like this. Why would I have done this? I guess maybe just to like fold out. Like his two high cards, like his king, queens, ace, queens. This guy probably flats ace, king. Without exaggeration, that's his three bet percentage, three percent over an enormous sample. Probably legitimately just flats ace, king. Um, so probably just to get him to fold out like two random over cards, I guess. Um, not a huge fan of it though. He calls. Turns an ace. Check. Check back. River to ten. He checks. I guess we just give up here. Ah, I go for the bluff. Which I don't suppose I mind really. You know, this guy hasn't bet the river so it's very unlikely he has a high flush. This guy... And I'm very familiar with this guy. He has a 14% bet river frequency and 92% won when called on the river. So, yeah, when he doesn't bet the river, you have to imagine he isn't nutted. But maybe he checks some nuts on the river too, who knows. 
But um, I guess here I'm just trying to fold out Jack X, Ace X without a heart, I guess. Um, but the problem with this guy is he, because he only bets over 14%, he's going to have a lot of like second nuts here and third nuts that, that don't fucking bet uh, that call. But yeah, I, you know, basically he hasn't got a heart. This is going to work. He's not going to call me with a, with a, with just a naked ace, you wouldn't imagine, or a, what have you. So let's see. He does call. <laughs> okay, he had pocket fives. What a fucking moron. Um, on to the next one. We I saw the limper with the ace queen. We pick up a cold call and another call. Flop two overs back doors. I expect to see myself bet this pretty high frequency. No, we don't. Uh, we turn the queen. Min bet, call, raise, call, fold. We have a seven. He bets 30. Um, he bets full pot. Are we all in here? Hmm. Are we all in here? See, normally against pot on the river, you don't want to be jamming just top pair because pot typically represents better hands than one pair. Like here, theoretically here, he's like telling us he's backed out of flush. He's telling us he's got probably a set, at least a set, maybe a flush. Um, maybe once in a blue moon, two pairs after the turn checks through. But basically, one pair shouldn't be good here. But we're up against an absolute whopper. So can we now raise some value and maybe get caught by a king-queen or a, a jack? Um, I suspect I'm probably just going to call. But I think there's some merit to raising. He's only 30 bigs left. I think there's some merit to putting the rest in here. Do this call. And he had queen three. And he almost certainly would have paid us. Two queens, we get three bet by a not fully stacked recreational player. All in, Rich? No, just Corby. Okay. Bet all in, Rich? Yeah, now we're all in. And he had the A7 on. Open the 7 8, get him in three bet. Calling, flopping a strong draw, checking. Um, do we want to bet here? Like getting check raised here would kind of stink, but then again, we've got enough equity to just go with it. Like with draws, <clears throat> if I just have like naked flush draws, I tend not to bet with them too often. Um, I'd prefer my like bluffs or we're bluffing with draws. I've learned to come with stuff I don't mind bet folding rather than. Something like this, which, you know, we're happy just bet calling here or maybe even bet three bet shoving it because we have so much equity. But if we didn't have the gut shot to go with it, maybe I wouldn't. Um, anyway, let's see what we do. We do bet calls. Turn into Jack. He checks. Um, hmm. That bet calling has got far less appeal because his line for check raising is probably going to be stronger than his his rage for check raising is going to be stronger than the flop. And we only have one more pull of the deck as well. Um, so do I want to double barrel here? I think we just want to realise now. I'll try and realise. Well, not try and realise. We will realise if we check back. Nope. I go up and a bet again. And we do get raised. Yeah, this really stinks now. But we're getting an amazing price. We need 18% equity to call. We've got that. So we just call and hope to get there, I guess. But yeah. I'm not a big fan of that turn, but... River breaks, sea bed, squeeze, have to fold. Okay. Ace for suited. <laughs> Raise from a regular, flat from a loose button. I guess we're squeezing here. 
than small blind. There's meant to be a lot of flatting going on, I wouldn't have thought. Yep, we squeeze. Get rid of the regular. Get the call by the villain, uh, by the loose passive player. We're pleased with that situation. All ah, right, we've got trips. Okay. This one's not going to be too interesting then. C bet one third. He raises. We're all in. He's all in. Jack. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, King Jack, we race. A call from a loose big blind. We flop top two pairs. Big bet call. Turn queen. Uh, big bet again, I guess, versus a recreational. Big enough. Two thirds call. And all in or small? That's a good point, actually. <clears throat> like, and I guess if you've reached this find the video, it's because you don't get bored by my content. So we're going to indulge slightly in in a little um, segue here. Because I wouldn't be surprised to see myself just bet like a one-third pot here just to try and get the call. Um, and I guess now it's a good time to talk about like what I haven't liked about poker in the last, well, probably a few months, actually not just the last few weeks, is that, like, over this weekend, I've just been playing, like, with an unfiltered and unrestricted, like, passion for the game and just doing what, whatever, basically, maybe I've just been, like, playing pretty hands and just doing whatever the fuck I feel like, whatever I feel like, is this okay? Like, I think in the last few months, the more I've worked with, like, GTO stuff and I've, like, GTO-type discussions with my peers... I've tried to be too fucking precise. And they're not good enough to be that to be too precise. Uh, none of us are really. You know, in terms of like well, what is the exact perfect combo here? What is the optimal size here? Um, like in theory. And all these things I'm just not good enough and never, ever, ever will be good enough to do. And I think it's it's been at the expense of some of the things that I just naturally and intuitively do quite well. You know, I have a feel, is someone weak or strong? You know, is, this, is someone weak? Um, they have a value hand, so do what, you know, or is somebody weak and I have a bluff? Therefore, against this player, if I think they're weak, how much do I need to bet to achieve whatever it is I'm trying to achieve? All these, like, little exploits I, I, I try and I try, used to be really good at trying to do versus population in general and then individuals if I got a feel for them it's all it all went out the window I had my hood running I was trying to like play more balance I was trying to think of which combinations do what and what would happen a lot of the time is I would just overload myself with like thoughts and information and then just not, not know what to do and eventually it's like oh and then I've got three of the tables queuing up for action in the, oh, fuck it, who cares, just check or whatever. And I just played, in my, in an attempt to play really well in theory, that I haven't studied well enough, uh, I actually, in practice, played far, far worse. Um, and I was making far more mistakes, because I, I was kind of like, how would you put it? Like risk averse of scared money, but not scared money, but I was playing like scared money. A scared money doesn't win money. Like obviously, I, don't, I play well within my bankroll. I play stakes where it doesn't change my life if I have like a really good day or a really bad day. So I'm not scared money in that sense. But like I'm scared of making mistakes, scared of losing, scared of feeling stupid, scared of feeling inadequate. How All these things. Um, scared of looking silly to people I'm never going to fucking meet. Um, and it, just, it just manifests itself over time. It snowballed slowly but surely without me ever really noticing until the weekend into my essentially just becoming like a, a really bad, weak player because I just lost so much aggression from my game. So much aggression. Um because I didn't know what to be aggressive with anymore. I didn't like, and I was like, right, okay, well, we hearing all these stupid fucking cliches that are bullshit, like, oh, well, we can't bet small in position on the river. We can't bet small in position on the turn. You know, if we, you know big bets only on turns and rivers, you know, out of position. 
Um, just loads of stuff, like all the little cliches that you hear people say, because typically <clears throat> solvers will go for larger sizes on later streets. So then all the little um, like shortcuts people look for and what have you, then revolve around those types of things. So it's like, right, well, I have to, if I'm betting the river in position, it probably should be a big bet. But I have a hand that doesn't want a big bet, so I just have to check with it. And all shitty little things like that there, but it just costs you so much value because you might have second pair on the river in position. And like, well, range wants to, to bet like two thirds or bigger here. But second pair doesn't. Second pair wants to bet fucking one third pot to get called by weaker second pairs or to get called by, you know, under pairs and things. But because, we you know, we're not, al quote unquote, allowed to have small bets, we therefore don't, we therefore miss a value bet. Um, because when we probably think, well, if we bet two thirds pot with second pair, we're not going to get called by enough worse hands. And you go down all these stupid thought processes. We're well, not stupid. Go down all these thought processes, and they really mess you up because, like, well, in theory, I can't do this. Like, I don't want to value bet second pair for th for two thirds pot in position on the river. So therefore, I don't have a bet. Where the natural conclusion that really should be, well, I don't have a, t you know, I, I don't, I. I can't bet two thirds pot with this second pair, but I want to bet something, so I'm just going to. I'm just going to bet quarter pot, get the call. Bet one third pot, get the call. But because we're worried that, you know, a good player is going to understand that we're betting the strength of our hand and then raise our small bets, we don't do it, which is fucking nonsense. Because yeah, a good player might notice that and they might exploit us. That good player might represent fucking half a percent of the player pool, where the rest of the player pool are just going to look. Oh fuck. I thought he was going to bet two thirds pot and I was going to have to fold my pocket sevens. But now he's only bet one third pot, so I can call and see what he's got. So, like, all these like population tendencies I used to be really good at, um, at maximizing EV against, I've got really bad at it because I've just stopped doing it. Um, so, this, yeah, this hand's a good example of that. Whereas I've got a really good hand, justifiably, we could go all in with that hand that's really strong. But I don't think Villain here is particularly that strong. He's like, he's a 71 slash zero. Um, he's going to reach the river with some pretty strong, with some pretty weak ranges. You know, and maybe he has a hand as weak as Queen-9 here. Maybe he has a hand as weak as Jack-9. Um, maybe he even has some fucking 2x in his range. Do sex and just call calls. And we want to get, we want to capture calls from all of those things, not just bet big and like win match when we when he's got King-X or Jack-X. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing myself go small here and just assume we get a call from everything in his range rather than going larger and, you know, making do sex fold, maybe making 8x fold, etc. You can have some 8x for certain. Here you can have some, um, like, what can you have, like, 10 eight maybe. You know, things that on the flop just had little shitty backdoors then call the turn. You know, there's ways you can get to this river with the 8 of clubs, for example. Uh, so let's see what we do. I do it after all that. I do end up going for the all in, and person calls, um, and we got max value from top pair. But yeah, I'm glad we had that segue into that conversation because I knew there was something else I wanted to say in this video. Um, right, we'll do a couple more hands. We'll go to half an hour, then we'll do another video after this. Um, so we have two aces here. We three bet versus. Um, Un well, 136 hands now in my hood means he was almost certainly unknown to me at the time. Um, if he calls, we just bet big because fish in it, big and big bet. Um, he calls, turn ace, that's an interesting card. Because <laughs> now obviously we, well we don't have the nuts, obviously we lose to 8-7, but we've got the nuts for all intents and purposes. If he's got a beat then, Hallelujah. But that ace probably isn't good in terms of like getting value because it's unlikely he has an ace. And a lot of his like hands that were willing were quite happy with the flop, pocket eights, pocket nines, six X, aren't gonna be as happy anymore. But at the same time we don't want to bet too small and have action killers come on the river. You know, like if it comes any deuce, three, seven, eight, club. All bad cards. Um, so what size do we want to bet here against a fish? Um, I don't know. You know what? I just don't know. Part of me wants to go all in. Because that best reps draws. 
And maybe he doesn't fold if he's got a draw himself, maybe he doesn't fold it. So part of me thinking all in, another part of me thinking just go like twenty. Because twenty just sets up like a half pot river shove or thereabouts. Interesting, let's see what we do. We do go with the twenty calls. Uh, deuce on the river. Of all like the four liner cards to see, this is by far the nicest one because it's just not that likely that he's got a three X in his range. A three. If it if it come at towards a higher end of the four, like if it come like a seven or even a three, um, that would have been much less happy. The question now is: Do we go all in? Or do we check to allow him to bluff with like missed flush draws, etc.? I mean, if he's got a three, he's got a three. Good for him. He's going to get all that money, whether we jam any calls or. So, like, but is this board now too scary to get called by worse? I mean, if he's got an ace, he's probably calling. I don't know. It's interesting. Um, I could see myself go either way here check, call, or jam. I don't remember the hand. Oh. Oh, we. We went with a little five percenter. Okay. And he jams we obviously call. And he had he had the bluff. So that was just unnecessarily fancy from me there, but we like it. We like to see it. Um Okay, we have a it's probably the same player, I imagine. Looking at the stats. He's 2.2x in from the small blind because he's a virgin. We three bet. He four bets all in. We're just going to snap it off, of course. Whatever. Yeah, king's good for him. King four suited. We open the button. A call from the small blind. Call from the big blind. Uh, we fought trips. There's nothing much to see here. Is a bet. Call. Fold, check, bet, call, check, bet. I guess river sizing is the only thing to think about really here. We've gone with a relatively big size. Um, I guess if he's got a seven, do we want to go this big? Is it gonna? Is this gonna blow him off a seven x? Don't know if I like this sizing. I think it, I, I, I wouldn't eat all at this size. I'm just not sure. I think I prefer like really quite small here, or the all in and <clears throat> like massively try to like monkey rep the missed draw, like bet bet all in. You know, then hopefully he puts me on like missed draws way more often. This looks really really value heavy. This size, I think. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I like this size. I think I would have preferred, like, small or all in. But anyways, we got the call. Uh, he had the seven. He goes on folding. Got books of things. Uh, right, queen nine off. We'll make this the last hand from this video. Um, we get a raise from a particularly active looking small blind. We defend the queen nine, we fought trips, call, turn a full house, call. And then he goes half pot on the river after going full pot the previous streets. We put him in, he calls. Uh, <laughs> I do remember that one because I thought it was quite amusing. He went pot, pot, gets there. When it's pretty clear that when we go pot, when we call pot, pot, We've either got like a, well, we haven't got our flush draw. Maybe in his mind we have. Uh, but we, we just have to have a nine or a six nearly all the time. Uh, then he gets there on the river and forgets to put the rest in. So I guess like we were just being generous there. He forgot to put the rest in. We felt like, well, come on, mate. We owe you it all. So have it all. Um, yeah, I do remember that one. Quite funny. Uh, right, anyways, that's half an hour. We'll leave it there. We're going to do this uh the second part of this video will come out tomorrow. Um, well done, anyone that's got through it. I'm fully aware that it hasn't been 
hyper interesting um, because we're just looking at hands quite quickly. But if you have read it this far, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you've read it this far and haven't yet hit the like button, then if you could do that, it would be flipping fantastic. Uh, but if you don't want to hit the like button, but you do want to reward me, do something anti-Tory today because, as always, fuck the Tories and anyone that supports them. Um, yeah, we'll be back with the second half of this video tomorrow. For now, take care, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.